if you look up diseases, it says these are deteriorations of the body that lead to frailty and death over time, loss of function. Um, and then if you look up aging, it says exactly the same thing, except that it, it happens to the majority of people who live long enough. Uh, and then, so I've always thought since knowing that fact, why is it that if something happens to 49% of the population that's horrible, we throw billions of dollars at it, but if it happens to 51%, we say, yeah, that's natural, happens to most people, let's just not worry about it. And that, that cutoff is ridiculous. And in fact, I argue in my book that because it's the majority of us, we should be addressing it even more. We should be trying to understand what causes aging. And the other thing to remember is modern medicine is built on addressing diseases once they occur. Now, I call it whack-a-mole medicine. Mm -hmm. you, you treat the patient, push them out the door, they get sick again, they come back, you give them another medicine, push them out the door, and you repeat that until failure. And of course, we're, we're getting better at treating these diseases and trying to prevent people from falling off the edge of the cliff without even ever thinking, what is it that drove the person to the edge of the cliff in the first place? And that's aging. Yeah. So you, you kind of go into how aging occurs, why aging is a disease in your book, and then you go into kind of some of the ways, technology, lifestyle changes, supplements, um, that we can live for longer but also live healthier as well i suppose that's the key thing isn't it 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 is you know i'm, I'm called an aging researcher um and sometimes some days i feel that way but it's, it's all about health span and longevity those are the words that i like to use because what we're finding in the lab um and studies of people who live healthy lifestyles and even take medicines that we think may slow aging these people live very healthy into old age. So they're, they're at 70 and 80, they still feel 20 and 30. Um, and even beyond 100, they're still very productive and excited about being in the world and teaching their great grandkids things. And then they die fairly suddenly, their be bodies become frail, and then they die. It turns out, it's not just better for the person, it's better for the family, because you're not paying for your relatives to be in uh, nursing homes. And, but it's also good for the economy because someone who lives that long, over 100, costs about a third uh, the, the overall cost of someone who dies at a regular age. So the health span is the important point. So when I ask people how long do you want to live, often they say, oh, 90 years old because they think, oh, God forbid, I know what it's like to be 90. But we have to remove that view because what we're talking about our lifestyles and technology that will allow us to be 90, sure, uh, but feel as though we're still in our 30s and 40s.